her and William, they can conquer the world, and they will do. It's happened. It's she's apologised. It's finished. Let's move on. She's not done anything wrong. She made a mistake, you know. And like everybody, we learn from our mistakes, and she will never do that again. But uh, I mean, when I first saw that picture, I was I was really struck how beautiful it was. I didn't even forensically examine it. I didn't check the sleeve or the hands. I I just saw those gorgeous faces all just beaming out the picture and Mother's Day and and Catherine looking so well, you know. And um, I was just thought, well, what a what a great idea to do this today, you know. Certainly, as we've been concerned about the princess for for many weeks now because she's had the serious operation and we haven't seen her and we haven't had any updates from the palace or anybody just to say that she's doing okay. Well, that's fine, but we, um, you know, we need to see, don't we? And uh, and. And we haven't. And this was the first glimpse, and it was a really lovely picture, and I was overwhelmed by it. But it's now time to put an end to it. You know, it's, it was a mistake. It wasn't a. It wasn't. Does this require a border trade inquiry into it? We don't have to have a royal commission on it. We just have to forget it and just say, like, it's over. And I really enjoyed the picture. I'm glad the newspapers published it because it was a lovely Mother's Day picture. And the children were beaming, and I was full of praise for William, who took it. I thought, my God, you know, your first big, big assignment, and you've cracked it. You know, it just, it was, um, it was a brilliant picture, but it's, it's suspect now, and it's, um, and it's over. But you know, Catherine, you know, we're looking forward to her getting back to work. You know, to she's a hardworking member of the royal family, and 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 a superstar of the royal family, of course, as well. And her and William, they can conquer the world, and they will do. And, um, you know, but uh, at the moment, it's um, she's still recovering, and, and we just hope she gets better quickly. Whatever you say about the, the uh, manipulation, those faces of those three children and Catherine is all I looked at. And when I looked at them, when you looked at them, or when most people looked at them, it brought a smile to their face. And it was a tribute to her that she issued that picture on Mother's Day because, you know, that's a special day of the year for mothers. And Catherine's been going through the mill lately, this operation. I mean, two weeks in hospitals must have been pretty serious. And now she's fit and well, getting fit and well, and uh, she looked great in that picture. You're wearing a walking boot. So obviously, she's been for a walk, so she's obviously exercised now. And um, and I thought, well, you know, what a cracking picture. And, and, and the whole thing's been ruined by... Uh, it's Photoshop. We all learn by our mistakes, as we say. We all learn by our mistakes, and um, and you know she's learned, and she'll never do it again. But you know the best thing about it all was she next day she issued a sort of an apology, and um, and she did say something in that statement. She says sharing the pictures with you. Now that's one of the great things she does. She says shares her pictures with us, and they're brilliant pictures. Carry on, Catherine, and uh, your pictures are. Brilliant. I must say, I'm a great fan, and I hope to God that uh, this dies down soon because it's, it's getting out of hand, really. When I do jobs with Catherine, I'm excited because it's only when she smiles, the camera lights up, boom, you get like a great feeling. You get this wonderful feeling of, of photo photographing her, and you know, she's a beautiful lady. And, and the way her and William, you know, spark off each other, the way they look at each other, the way they after all these years of marriage and, and three children, you know, it's still a lovely thing to see, a lovely couple to photograph, and they are the future. They are the future of the monarchy. They are the future of, of the of the heads of state in this country. It's been going a thousand years since William the Conqueror, and now we've got William and Catherine, and, uh, and, and you know, one day you'll be the king, one day she'll be the queen. Harry treated William appallingly, treated Kate appallingly, has told not only mischievous uh, untruths, but has also defamed them. And I'm not surprised that William doesn't want anything to do with Harry, uh, even on this very important day commemorating their mother. Would you agree, Tom, that uh, even a, perhaps a profuse apology on Harry's part will not repair the damage that both him and Meghan have caused over the past two or three years? Uh, it's a very sad memory that uh, when they opened the memorial, the Diana Memorial, the one thing these two brothers are united on is a devotion to the memory of their beloved mama, mother. And when they uh, unveiled the memorial down in Kensington, that they came together 
uh, you know, physically for that. And now here we are three years on and uh, Harry is not even going to appear at the same time as William. He'll be zoomed in after William's uh, bit of the ceremony ha has finished. So uh, the, the, the depth, the Arctic nature of this bit of feud cannot be overstated, can it? No, it can't be. It's very sad in a way. Of course, it's very sad. It would have been so much better if Harry had stayed in Britain and Meghan had played the part which everyone thought she wanted to play in part of the royal family. But the problem is that Meghan wanted to really be the queen and Harry was her lapdog. He did everything to support Meghan because he needed her. And he's a very needy person. He's damaged himself uh, beyond uh, repair, in my view. And now he's desperately probably wants to find a way back because really he's in a dead end. But uh, I don't blame William at all, not wanting anything with Harry. Even an apology, I doubt, at this moment would be heartfelt. How do you think William's doing in all of this? Because when you think about William right now, he's got his dad, who's extremely poorly, unable to carry out royal duties, his wife recovering from surgery, a maelstrom of social media speculation with all sorts of opinions and conspiracy theories, uh, many of which implicate him, and at the set, a brother who's an absolute bonehead, and at the <laughs> same time, he's having to up his workload to fill in all the gaps. It can't be easy. <laughs> No, I think it's terribly difficult. <laughs> One feels very sorry for William, but, and he didn't even actually volunteer for the job. Um, we all want him to do it successfully. We're our monarchies. You want William to be a successful Prince of Wales and then a, a successful king. I think it's very, very difficult for him. I think the weakness he's suffering at the moment is he doesn't have good staff around him, and, he, and therefore he doesn't get the advice to avoid the mistakes which have happened over the past few weeks. Firstly, obviously, with the unfortunate photograph of Kate and her children, and then not appearing at this memorial for the late King of Greece, uh, having Andrew and Fergie in the front there, it looked terrible. And uh, so it goes on. Um, but William, I think, is much loved. And, you know, the thing about William is he wants to create his own monarchy, uh, just as Charles did. And William thinks he should have a mo be a modern monarch, part of young people, you're part of the up and coming, the 30, 40 year olds, the 20 year olds, and he's quite right. Uh, young people will only have affection for the monarchy if they can identify with it. And William wants to create that identity and separate himself from his father's and grandmother's way of doing things. And, and you know, there's justification in that. He's just got to be, I think, a bit more careful. But you know, one of the great weaknesses of people in power is they don't like appointing somebody who's going to say no. And the worst example, or best example of that, of course, is King Charles himself, who whenever someone says they said no to him, that was the last thing he said. He was instantly fired. <laughs> I fear, I fear that uh, William may be following in the same way. And I do urge him through your uh, programme now to start <laughs> thinking very hard about getting some very intelligent, savvy uh, people in his uh, entourage, in his bureaucracy, who will say no to him or will say, we can do it a better way. Well, I'll... And uh, the, fo the Photoshop thing will blow over. It was mm. the product yeah. of a, a, you know, just one of those things. Uh, Robert, it seems that the Sussexes felt fit to come and clarify that these comments didn't come from them. Are you buying that? Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, I thought they were a little bit contrived to say that Megan would have weighed in and said that oh, I wouldn't have done that. I mean, you know, it, 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 the reality is, why would they do that? It would make no sense whatsoever. So, look, my feeling is I'm glad they clarified it and made sure that um, they they didn't do it. I mean, <laughs> the bottom line is I think it's time now to move on from this. It's been going on for, for days. Kate has admitted she made a, a genuine mistake. She's not been very well. She's recuperating at home. I think we should just draw a line under it. The, the fact is American news agencies, you know, are, are world agencies like Reuters and AP, you know they've got their rules, and they and you should they people should stick to it. But look, they are ultimately she don't. There's nobody. There's no real damage done here. A, a long term, Kate and William won't probably won't you know do photographs like this again, and they make sure they will issue professional photographs that are and meet all the requirements. So I, um, I think there's others are trying to blow it out of proportion now. Others being a, a huge sway of people on the internet. A lot of people you meet at the pub at the moment, pretty much anyone you speak to, well, and of I course journalists as well. I think the pub, 
I don't know about the pub, I think on the internet, but you know, we should realise, and I, don't, I know it's hard in the media, but the internet has got some pretty wicked and trolls out there and people are writing quite appalling things that would not even be said in the pub. So I, I actually do think that we should not necessarily be ruled by the internet and Trump try and take sort of media responsibility I... as organisations because, you know, the online people, online is such... Mm. It's, it's it's a cesspit of wicked comments about Kate at the moment, and frankly, they're not worth repeating. I agree with you, Robert, in terms of uh, the cesspit of the internet and not giving the trolls any more airtime. However, uh, you know, a lot of the international media outside the UK is asking questions that many in the UK feel they can't ask because it is about the royal family, and we like to give a level of respect to the uh, Princess of Wales mm. and respect her wishes for privacy, but there seems to have been something that's gone awry in the last few days. The trust has been somewhat knocked, the communication of the trust bit, between the public and the true, palaces. But, uh, yeah, I'd say that's true to a degree. I mean, I've been covering the royal family 35 years or so, and, you know, they do issues... I think that there's... And I've written about this, saying it's a genuine mistake. It, was, it, it shouldn't have happened because it does erode trust and integrity. But I think this was just a slip-up. I don't think it's something that is standard practice. If you go deal with Buckingham Palace, and, uh, and they, they will make sure the photographs are issued in a great way. I think an issue that has gone on here is because Kate is a, you know, a, 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 actually quite a talented amateur photographer, she's been doing photographs of their children, where in the past it would have been a professional photographer taking the picture. And I think that probably is an error that they've moved away from that. And I understand why, because they like to guard their privacy, but it's led to a bit of sloppiness here and a bit of unprofessionalism. And I think when you're dealing with things like this, you have to be professional. If you want to build build a wall, get a brick layer. If you want to take a picture, get a professional photographer. So I, I think that's been the error. But I do think we've, it's what, this was Monday, this all broke. It's now the middle of the week, coming up to the end of the week. I, I, just, I think that a lot of it has been made of it. And when lot, the media not... brought it up in, in the White House, you know, yeah. it's just to try to stir the pot, in my opinion. Well, also because even Americans are interested in this. I mean, they are generally interested in our royal family. But, I mean, something that would quickly put this issue to bed, and I'm with you, Robert, it's Wednesday while we're still talking about a photo from Sunday, would be to just show the original photo. If it was an original photo that was doctored, why haven't they done that? I think because they don't want they don't want people pouring over the photograph again and to keep it going because if we we're all calling for that photograph to be released yes I think it would put um, an end to it all um, but of course we probably pour all over it again and then say that this is wrong with it that's wrong with it and the story will just roll on look I I, I think that, that they probably got the lessons learned they've got a photographer who works with them all the time a guy called Andrew Parsons used to be with Boris Johnson as his in-house photographer. I think next time, maybe just let Andrew take the pictures. I mean, I've been very reluctant to get into too much sensationalism around this picture. And I think we should start, Kinsey, with what we actually do know. Let's just roll back a couple of days. And it's been a lot of royal news in a couple of days, but the Sunday papers knew we were in for a treat when they were told there would be a picture made available for the Sunday papers that was going to go out on social media channels, the Prince and Princess of Wales' Instagram account, of a new picture of the princess and her children to celebrate Mothering Sunday. Now, I think the palace were in something of two minds about this. Let's also remember when this photograph came. The last time you and I sat down to chat, Kinsey, it was about all of the conspiracy theories about where's Kate. And I think there was a sense that there really needed to be a sighting of Kate, not some snatched picture by an illicit paparazzi while she was being driven around in a car on the Windsor estate. I think there was a feeling that they wanted to do something to reassure a, a, a pretty concerned public. And this was deemed a perfect opportunity. And so a picture was released. We understand that it was taken at Windsor last week. Um, we understand now more details have emerged that it was shot towards the back end of last week in a pretty tight window. And we know it was taken by Prince William. Now, we're very familiar with Kate as an amateur photographer, as she calls herself, behind the lens, because we know she takes many pictures of her children. But this is the first time William's ever taken a picture. And perhaps the prince has quite a bit to answer for. We shall see. What yeah. we know is that Kate, with the picture, did some digital editing or manipulation. Now, if we put this in context, Kinsey, let me ask you, how many pictures do you put out on Instagram without using a filter, without using some kind of an app to sort of make yourself or your scenario look the very best that you possibly can? 
zero. It has to have a filter there. I always tweak, you know, I don't have a clear face always every single time, Katie. That is that is why I was not offended by this story at all. (laughs) So she's obviously done a little bit of digital work. Now, I'm assuming because I don't know this, that she's probably plugged the camera into her Mac or whatever her computer is and done a little bit of editing. We understand she sort of wanted to make the children look as good as possible. And let's be honest, She's just come out of major surgery. She hasn't been seen since Christmas Day. This is an incredibly beautiful young woman who always looks picture perfect. And I've seen her in the flesh without filters and she is absolutely gorgeous. But she may not be looking at her best at the moment, having gone through what she's been through and still in a period of recovery. So let's forgive her if she's touched herself up a little bit in all of this. I think I think it's worth remembering this. After the now Prince and Princess of Wales were married, in 2011, um, Prince Harry more or less moved into their apartments at yeah. Kensington Palace. He was so close to them. Mm. He got on so well uh, with uh, Kate. I think William was even slightly jealous of right. how close his brother was getting to his new bride. They could not have been friendlier. They could not have been happier. Those were the, That was the era of the happy prince. What happened? Well, everything that's happened has happened post Meghan. Mm. Uh, and, of course, when she was living briefly at Nottingham Cottage in in at Kensington Palace, she used to trot down uh, Kensington High Street to there's a Californian whole food yeah. uh, shop uh, in what was the Barker's Center, the, Bar- the old Barker's department yeah. store, of which I was a main board director at one time, but yeah. that's beside the point. Well, listen, you and went she a long way to round to, to tell us shop. that. But by the way, also <laughs> where the, the headquarters of the Daily Mail is. I don't wonder if she knew that at the time. Oh, it is. It is, of course, and part of the shop was this California shop. I can't remember its name, and anyway, we don't want to it's advertise Whole Foods, it. Yeah, Whole Foods but, is the name. Whole, well, you've done it then. Fantastic. But that was very much part of her thing. Yeah. Uh, I mean, she's a great proselytizer. She She's always telling other people what to do and what's good and, yeah. and say, look at me, aren't I wonderful? If you do what I tell you, you can be as beautiful and, and fabulous and radiant as I am. And that's the message that's coming across. And, uh, well, I, I imagine with their expenses round the clock, uh, 24 hours a day, uh, security, three uh, shifts of burly men guarding their hilltop Camelot in yeah. Montecito, you can burn through a lot of money very quickly. Oh, yeah. So I imagine looking at every means of, of raising cash. Yes, I'll be interested to see who's actually making the jam because I presume she's not going to be slaving away uh, in that fake kitchen there with the pot, with the pots and pans and the and the and all the, the, the sort of the copper um, and the, and the whisks and all the pots and, and various various plates and things. She won't be doing it, but it really is sort of a hell of a come down for what they said they were going to do. You know, they were going to have this charitable foundation. You know, this is just grubby commercialism, isn't it? I don't blame them for doing it, but they can hardly claim to be you know the saviors of the world selling jam. And pans. Well, I think some of their other plans have run into the sand, haven't they? Yeah. Uh, I mean, they wanted to dominate the media. They wanted to initiate good programs. I mean, the only one that really had any traction was the six-parter called Imaginatively Harry and Meghan <laughs> that went on and on and on. And right. it was essentially one long whine about their privileged life. Here they are, Michael. Let's just think about it. They're good-looking people. They've got more money you can shake a stick at. They've got two beautiful, healthy children, not counting the rescue chickens. They're surrounded by people in California who say, aren't you wonderful? You're terrific. You're Mm -hmm. fabulous. And, And yet they behave as if they've got the worries of the world on their shoulders. They should be hugging themselves with glee that they're so lucky. And when people around the world who are really having it tough at this time, particularly at this time, hear all that, I think they must wonder, what planet are you on? I mean, in an extraordinary move, Meghan announced, you know, in, in, in what many people are saying was a deliberate <laughs> yeah, attempt to quite, overshadow Diana's Legacy Awards, uh, she announced the, the launch of her boring new uh, lifestyle website called uh, American American Riviera Orchard or something. But let's uh, go through the video. There's a video of that. First of all, uh, let's have a listen to uh, Prince William speaking at the Diana Award, Awards last night live. This evening's Legacy Award is particularly special as it marks the 25th anniversary year of the Diana Award, a charity set up to reflect my mother's belief that young people can 
change the world. That legacy is something that both Catherine and I sought to focus on through our work, as have the 50,000 young people who have received a Diner Award over the past 25 years. Young people can change uh, the world and older people can change photographs. Uh, now, uh, let's move on to Harry coming back later in the award ceremony uh, via video from uh, Montecito. Every single day that you're working on these things, you don't even know the impact that it's making, right? You don't know that when you meet people and you have those interactions that you may have potentially change their day, change their outlook, change their perspective, giving them a little bit more hope and hopefully inspire them to go off and do something, uh, something similar. Uh, meanwhile, uh, in what, as I say, many people are, are interpreting as a deliberate bid to overshadow the two brothers, who, by the way, although they hate each other, they probably will never repair their feud, they are united in their devotion to the memory of their beloved mom mother. So remember that. And uh, in my view, Meghan should not have been releasing uh, news of her boring website, uh, lifestyle website, America Riviera Orchard. What does that even mean? But anyway, there's a video with it. Have a look. There she is standing in some cloisters uh, in a sort of a strange Elizabethan outfit. Uh, and there is her own handwriting, which uh, looks rather, rather florid, doesn't it? Uh, a lot of people saying the timing of this is no accident. And by the way, Alex, when did she become a chef? Oh, I don't know. She's anything <laughs> she wants to be, isn't she? She's an actress in permanent acting mode. Yep. I mean, this just looks like the sort of clart that you get given in some sort of, you know, budget hotel to try, you know, the little miniature bottles of shampoo and stuff to try and make it look a bit more posh. I give it about six months before it ends up in the sort of, you know, business class on some American airline and then it will die <laughs> a slow death. Yeah. Because uh, who's sitting there? I mean, uh, do you know what else? I mean, the audacity of this woman saying like, you know, this is my range of lifestyle products by yeah. the Duchess of Sussex. It's like, what? She just, she just thinks she's some sort of brand. Yes, exactly. Right. A, I don't think she you're is. Not, you're not a royal love. If you're a Royal, you'd be in this country yeah. in the drizzle, glad handing and cutting ribbons. You ain't no royal, you're just a bonehead who thinks there's something. <laughs> you know, no one likes you. Just go away with your silly merchandise. It is a re it's really crass, uh, the timing of this announcement.